It's a slow stitched bag made entirely by hand featuring two cute bunnies, one subtle, one bold. It's fully lined, a comfortable small bag to carry a few items in, customizable to make it just the way that suits you. So join me step by step, including the pattern and options for straps as we make this piece. Let's get started. Here's the pattern piece from my downloadable PDF that's available in my shop. The two options are to print it out, tape it together and place it on the fold, trace and cut out your piece, or you could print a second one, flip it over and then tape together at the line to make a full piece. I've traced this onto felt, onto two pieces of felt. So I will build my collage onto this felt. And these lines will help me later when I trim my collage down. You can see I've just roughly trimmed it here, given myself some room for things to stretch and move. So I will flip it over and I will build my collage on this side. And then later when the collage is completed, I'll have these lines here that will help me know exactly where to trim everything so that it will be the size I want. So now I'm going to start building my collage and I'm starting with larger pieces of fabric, tearing them to size and I'm adding them to the strap area. Then I'm bringing in this darker sort of navy colored piece of fabric and I'm really liking the shade of that. And so I'm thinking that I'm going to incorporate this on both sides. Right now, I'm just gonna work on the first side and add these two shades of blue. They're both sort of modeled. They're fabrics that I dyed myself. And now that they're in place, I'm basting them down. This is my preferred method. Of course, I could use pins. I can even fuse these in place or use glue stick. It really is my preferred way to slow stitch. It takes longer, but to me it's better than using pins and it gives me the option of moving things if I need to. So I just move across the piece, taking small stitches in the front and larger stitches in the back, securing everything in place. This is part of the process for me. It's very meditative. And I really enjoy taking the extra time to do this. Just using regular sewing thread in white. So it's blending in fairly well, but I still can see it. So I will take it out later. But this makes my first layer of fabric. It's really just three large pieces. So now that that's all in place, I'm going to flip it over and trim away the excess fabric. When I begin slow stitching, I don't want the extra fabric there to distract me. I've already got um, a fairly good margin outside of the lines of my pattern there. You can see outside of the blue lines. So I know I'm gonna have extra fabric. I just wanna remove this extra amount now I'm coming back in. I've grabbed some other pieces of fabric that I think might go well here. This is just a process of trimming pieces and moving them around and deciding where I want them to go. And once I have all these pieces in place, I'm going to come back again and do another layer of basting. This time I'm going to use a darker thread for two reasons. One reason is that I, on the back, I will be able to distinguish the two colors of thread from each other if I want to remove them, and I think I probably will in this case. And the other reason is because these fabrics that I've added are darker, 
And so I think that the darker thread won't show up as much. So again, I could use pins here. But I really like working this way. And I don't mind the extra time that it takes to sew everything in place. Now that I'm ready to stitch, I wanted to go over the threads and needles that I'm using. I'm using a chenille needle, number 24, and I'm using two different kinds of pearl cotton. One is DMC, number eight, and the other is a Wonderfeel, number eight, both pearl cottons. Both of these threads cost about the same amount the difference being that you get about twice as much of the DMC as you do the Wonderfill. Where I live, the DMC Pearl Cotton is only available in a few colors, but the Wonderfill is available at my local quilt shop in many, many colors. So here I've chosen a blue and a white that I'll be stitching with today using my chenille needle, which has a larger eye. You could use whatever needle of choice you may choose to use a longer needle for slow stitching so you could stack more stitches up, whatever your preference. I'm stitching now on my second piece, the other piece. And on this piece, instead of making a collage, I've just layered up some of the navy fabric. So I'm stitching these straight lines in different directions using the white. And it's adding a lot of texture. The color is contrasting, which I really enjoy. So now that I've got a lot of the lower area done, I'm going to go back and remove some of those darker basting stitches. Once those are gone, I can continue stitching the rest of the piece. So here's my solid color stitching done. I varied the stitch length and the direction a bit, and I'm really liking the way it looks. But I think I want to add a little bit more. So here you can see I've added some more stitch. I brought in some of that blue. And I also grabbed a sort of a burgundy red color to experiment in a few places with that. I think it adds a little bit of an interesting little something for the eye to look at. But I still think there's one more thing I wanna add, and that's a bunny. So I'm bringing out my woodland set of templates and I'm choosing the two bunnies from the set. I think I'm going to stitch one on one side and one on the other. They're just the perfect size for this bag and I think they're going to really add something kind of fun. I think I'm going to do them in different ways on each side and I'm going to start with the hopping bunny. So here's my bunny that I've added. I cut that out of white fabric and stitched that on and that made me want to bring out my orange and green and add a few carrots that the bunny's jumping towards. So now what I'm gonna do is flip the piece over and cut away the excess felt, just following the blue line that I made, moving my way around the piece and cutting away all of that excess batting. Then I'm gonna take the fabric that's left and stitch it to the back so the edge of this piece will be enclosed. I've done some clipping in the curved areas to make everything fit. I've stitched it back so the batting's not showing because the edges are stitched under. So here's the other piece of the bag, the other side, where I've stitched on the other bunny in a more subtle way, just outlining the area and adding some blue stitches in the bunny's body. I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to pick up this woodland set that includes these two bunnies. So I have these two pieces ready to go. This, this second piece I've just finished stitching. So now I'm doing the same thing with my second piece that I did with my first piece. Trimming off the felt, making sure not to cut the fabric, working my way around, and then I'm going to stitch back all the edges so that none of this felt batting is showing. I'm using a running stitch to secure down the edges, moving my way along, stacking stitches. In some spots, there's a little less fabric than others. 
but I just do my best and move along. I'm paying attention to the shape of the felt. I don't want to distort it, especially around those corners. I want to make sure that I maintain the shape. So this corner, there's a little bit less fabric, but it, there's enough that I can work my way across. So I'm going to continue this all the way around the piece so that all the edges are enclosed. So now that my two pieces have stitched edges, I'm going to add a lining. I've used my pattern piece and I've traced on the fold. So I'm going to cut those two pieces apart and stitch those on as lining. Because I cut on the fold, I also have this oval shaped piece and I'm going to use that to add an extra layer around this curve. So I've cut them, clipped the corners, ironed that under, and I'm clipping those on. So that's going to be another layer underneath my lining. That way I don't have to worry as much trying to finesse that curve on the larger lining piece. I know that those edges at the curve are going to be covered up by my secondary piece. So now that it's clipped together, I am going to stitch on my lining. One option that would work really well in making this bag is using a pre-made strap. So this is a strap that I got locally from a haberdashery shop and it only cost me 49 cents. And it's a nice sturdy strap. So to connect this strap, I would just create two tabs like I've done here, stitch them on, and then I could add the straps. This is a really good option in a situation where you want a strap that's adjustable, it's gonna have more wear and tear, or you don't have time or don't want to make a strap yourself. I've decided that I want to make straps myself. So I've cut a piece of felt that is 15 inches long and just under two inches wide. I've started to add some slow stitching to it. I've based it on some navy blue on the edges. And now I'm going to attach it to one side of my bag. I've just used my embroidery floss and a mattress stitch. Now I need to finish my slow stitching on this strap. Here's my strap, all stitched and connected to this one piece. You may wanna also do this to your second piece. That way you'd have two straps on your bag. I'm opting for one strap because I find when I have two, I only hold the one and the other strap just pulls my bag open. But I do wanna have some more area on the sides and the bottom. So I've cut another piece and added some slow stitching. This piece is just like the one for the strap. The length of this one is 24 inches and the width is two and a quarter inches. But this is customizable. Could be wider, could be skinnier. And I've tapered the edges into a triangular shape. Now I'm going to attach this piece. So I'm taking a pen and marking the middle of both pieces so I can match them up. And I'm taking some clips and I'm going to clip it on all the way around. Then it will be time to stitch. Because this piece is going around curves in two places, I'm taking care to match everything up and add lots and lots of clips. What this does is it helps ease these straight pieces into each other in a really soft and gentle way. And while I'm not focusing on perfection, it just makes everything much easier and so my process of stitching is going to be very relaxed and everything will match up where I need it to when I add my second side. What I'm doing here is totally optional. Again, I'm doing it to make things easier for myself. I've threaded up two separate needles with the thread to stitch this and I'm going to add them both right in the bottom center. And so I'll have one that's going up the right side and one that's going up the left side. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can stitch and 
that ease as I'm going around the corners is going to stay really even. And when I get to the top, the top pieces that are tapered are gonna also be even on both sides. I've chosen to use this blue pearl cotton. So it is showing on one part where I have the lighter blue fabric and on the other side, the outside of the bag, it's not gonna be showing. So as I get to the top of my one side, where it's tapering, I'm taking that triangular shape and I'm pulling it over and stitching it right to the side of the bag. I'm gonna do that on the other side and then of course I will do it with the other piece which I need to clip on after this side is completed and stitch that on in the same way that I've stitched this side on. It's a little bit more awkward putting the second side on because you've already got the first side attached, but really it's the same. I'm going to mark the centers and line them up and clip them in the exact same way. So it's a repeat of the process of attaching this strip to the other side. I'm clipping, making sure to ease into those corners, and I'm going to use two threads starting in the middle and going up each side. Starting the thread is a little bit more awkward because I have to reach all the way inside of the bag and feel my way. But it's very doable, and once that's done, I can just begin stitching. So I take a few stitches with this first thread and needle, and I'm gonna reach in and bring in my second thread and needle. Bring that out, and that will be the one that I stitch in the other direction. So here's the bag stitched up all the way to the top of my strip. Here's what it looks like at the bottom. It blends all together really well. I'm going to turn it inside out and we can have a look at what's inside. There's the lining and the strip. You can see the two tiny spots where I came through. But really, it's really well formed inside. It's looking really good. So I'm going to turn it back around. And now I'm going to close the rest of the top of the bag. I'm going to bring the two sides together from that point in closing all of those and stitch all the way to the top. I still have some thread left on my needle from stitching up the side, so I'm going to use that thread to continue the stitching. This time I'm going to get all of the layers enclosed and stitch to the very top of the one side that doesn't have a strap. And then it will be one piece. So I work my way all the way to the top and go across when I get to the top. And then down the other side where the bag's opening is, I'm going to work about an inch down to attach there. I don't want to go too far because that affects how wide the bag can open. And then I'll repeat the process attaching the other side of the bag. And here's my bag completed. Both sides are different, and yet they go together so well. It has the one strap that I wanted, although you can see it would be easy to have that second strap. You just wouldn't stitch across the top. The inside is lined. It feels wonderful to touch. It's big enough to carry a few items. It has the sweet little bunny. It's everything I hoped it would be. You can see there's so much area for customization, colors. You can really do anything you want here with this bag. Don't forget the pattern is available in my shop. The pattern has pictures, instructions, links to other videos. It's really everything you would want. So go and check that out, pick it up if you want it, and make your own bag. Thank you so much for joining me, and happy stitching!